Hi, I'm Dan Quarterpassi. Today I'm reviewing an HO Scale SD40T-2 locomotive from Scale Trains. My example is decorated for Southern Pacific. Scale Trains offers this locomotive in both SP and Rio Grande versions. This model is available two ways. The factory direct price for the version with Loke Sound, DCC, and Sound installed is $259.99. The factory direct price for the DCC Ready version is $169.99. I got my sound equipped version as a pre-order direct from Scale Trains for $259.99. We'll start the model at 100 possible points. The engine comes in a sturdy cardboard box with a foam lining. Inside is an operator's manual with explanations of how the DCC function keys are set up, lubrication instructions, and other information. A two-piece plastic cradle protects the model. Foam inserts protect the handrails. This is a good box that should protect the model for storage and transport. Tunnel motors were built to draw cooler air from a lower height to combat overheating in Southern Pacific snow sheds on Donner Pass. Rio Grande also bought some of these locomotives. The SD40T-2 is essentially an SD40-2 with a different radiator section. Neither the SP nor the Rio Grande had conventional SD40-2s. I found some photos of the real SP8558 and the model looks to be an extremely close match. In a photo from 1985 the locomotive still had its class lights, but a photo from 1987 shows them removed and plated over as on the model. The real locomotive still had its full light package in a photo from 1990. In a photo from 1991 the oscillating lights had been removed and the locomotive had a beacon on the roof. The model best represents the appearance of the real engine in the 1987 to 1990 time period. The one error that I found is the horn. The one in the model is not the same as the one in the photos of the real 8558. Since fixing this would require a new horn casting, I'm taking five points. It's worth noting that the horn on the model looks correct for some other units, just not 8558. The paint is opaque and thin enough not to obscure detail. The markings are crisp and most of the tiny writing is legible with magnification. The detail is really outstanding. On the fireman's side, the front truck has a speed recorder cable and brake lines. There's also a very nicely done brake chain. I really like the SP style jacking pads. The handrails are made of a flexible plastic and most of the stanchions are straight. Be sure to be careful when handling them. On my model they tend to pop out of their holes easily. Fortunately they're pretty easy to put back in. One of the biggest standout features of this model is the completely open air intake area at the rear. The grills are photo etched and just like the real thing there's not much in there. It's hard to see, but there's even a bulkhead in the front on the inside. And how trick is this? There are fans in there. Granted, I had to flip the model over to see them, and they're not going to show up under normal layout viewing conditions, but this is still pretty cool. In front, the model has separately applied windshield wipers and grab irons. All of the details are very delicate and in proportion. Scale Trains modeled the appearance of this engine after its original L-shaped engineer's window was replaced by two separate panes of glass. The post in between is narrower than on a standard EMD cab. The anti-climber has double stanchions in the middle. The plow matches prototype photos and has grab irons on top. Also on the pilot are MU hoses, an uncoupling lever, and a brake hose. The brown armrests match photos that I have of this engine, though in some of the photos the brown looks a little darker. The cab side windows slide, although on my unit a couple of them are stuck in the open position. One of them on the engineer's side is loose and tends to slide around. I'll probably end up tack gluing mine to hold them in place. The cab has a full interior. On my model, the sunshades are loose and I can see the flexible glue used to attach them. I'll definitely have to fix these. This seems a little shoddy compared to the level of quality on the rest of the model, so I'm taking five points. In back, the model has the full SP light package, separately applied grab irons, and blanked out class lights. The rear pilot also has air hoses, a brake hose, and an uncoupling lever. I really like the narrow coupler boxes. On top, the model has more neat detail. The exhaust is open and you can see down into it. The dynamic brake fans have photo etched grills and the correct number of blades. The radiator grills are also photo etched. The AC unit, antenna stand, and conduit all look correct. Underneath, the engine has great detail below the sill, including traction motor cables, air filters, and fuel tank plumbing. All of the axles are powered and all of the wheels pick up current. 
I haven't taken the model apart, but the gear tower on the rear truck must have an extremely low profile not to show at all in the air intake area. The model is equipped with scale trains knuckle couplers. The coupler in front is low, so I'm taking five points. The rear coupler is at the correct height. All of the wheels are engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge. There is no body wobble. The engine weighs 20.7 ounces. I measured 4.4 ounces of drawbar pull on my force gauge. A typical HO scale diesel pulls about 2.5 ounces, so this is a strong engine. I'm running the engine on DCC and I haven't changed any of the factory default settings. Like most DCC models, the engine is set to address 3 out of the box. The number boards on the model turn on when the F8 key is pressed, which also turns on the sound. F0 operates the headlight. F7 turns on the oscillating headlight. Both of these are directional. The front headlights are only on when the engine is set to move forward. Pressing F14 activates the UDE emergency lights on both ends. This also turns off the headlights. F0 turns on the rear headlight when the engine is set to move in reverse. F7 turns on the rear oscillating light. Again, F14 turns on the emergency light and turns off the other lights. F1 rings the bell. F2 sounds the horn. The length of the toot depends on how long the button is pressed. This locomotive has the Loksound drive hold feature. This allows the engine sound to operate independently from the locomotive's speed. A heavy train starting out can be moving slow even with the prime mover in notch 8. A coasting locomotive can notch back down to idle while still moving. F10 is a brake. The momentum settings will determine how quickly the engine stops and starts. F4 turns on the dynamic brake sound. The overall sound volume is pretty loud for most layouts. I usually end up turning all my locomotives down. I think the horn in this one could be a little louder though. Let's take a look at what we've got. The horn is incorrect, so I took five points in the prototype accuracy category. The sunshades on my model were loose and had glue showing, so I took five points in the paint and detail category. The front coupler was low, so I took five points in the standards and operation category. That leaves us with a total of 85 out of 100 possible points, which would be a B on a report card. This is a neat model and it deserves a green signal. Scale Trains has done an outstanding job with this model. If you're a fan of Southern Pacific Power like I am, I think you'll like it.